NFM do a great deal for the film industry here in the Northeast. They organise seminars. Oh my God. They organise seminars and workshops and aim to develop local filmmakers as well as attract larger projects. Larger projects. Typo. Oh. Typo. oh. Hello and welcome back to Inspire. I'm Jacob Anderton with a brand new feature for you today. Uh, now first of all, apologies for there not being an episode last week, but we've been working really, really hard on getting the new series set up and underway. This week will be the last of the repackaged footage from the original television series, at least presented in the way that you see here. Uh, but next week we'll be starting with the brand new documentaries. Exciting times! The film we're about to show you, however, is from the third episode of our television series, and it takes a look at Northern Film and Media, a screen-based creative development agency here in the Northeast. They provide seminars and workshops to help develop filmmakers here in the area, as well as try to attract bigger productions to the region itself. They also have their own databases for use on productions, such as their widely popular hub of locations information. But anyway, they don't need me to speak for them, so uh, enjoy the feature. But as ever, please like, subscribe, and uh, share down below, and we'll see you next week. I'm Rupert Lee, I'm Events Manager for Northern Film and Media. That means I'm responsible for delivering a wide programme of industry-focused uh, activities for the creative community of the North East. Our events are one of the key ways that we engage with our clients and uh, they extend from intensive developmental workshops with expert practitioners through to showcase events, gala screenings, that kind of thing. In some cases they're about asking provocative questions, but what the whole range of activities are about is better connecting creative practitioners, particularly in film and television within the region, to the wider national and hopefully international markets to help them compete better for business and to produce better work. A handbrake turn on a hairpin bend Merry go round no, the waltz. I am Jen Bradfield and I'm Creative Industries Coordinator at Northern Film and Media. Um, I help to devise and deliver a programme of talent development and cross media activity, which helps to nurture and cultivate emerging and existing talent within the North East and on a national scale. We run a wealth of different projects at NFM. Some of our most recent projects have been Sound and Vision, which is a um, collaboration between a musician and a filmmaker, an artist filmmaker. And in the most recent edition, which we did this year, we collaborated with Philip Selway, who is the drummer of Radiohead, and he was releasing his second solo album. And so he came on board and he worked with an artist, which we chose, a duo from the Faroe Islands that are called Ramatic. And they collaborated on this video, which he used as the official video for his song, which was called It Will End In Tears. I'm John Tulip, I'm Managing Director of Northern Film and Media, um, and I'm responsible along with the board for setting the strategic direction of the company. I'm also responsible for making sure that we stick within our financial budgets and basically manage the company on a day-to-day -day basis. So I have a sort of handle on all the types of schemes and talent development initiatives and events that we're running on a regular basis. We try and service film and TV production companies in the region. We have some involvement with digital companies in the region. We're trying to develop talent and we're helping people grow their companies where we can. Um, and we do this with a variety of funding sources, some from Arts Council, Creative England, Creative Skills Set. Uh, we have an ERDF project that's currently running until 2014 in September. Um, so we utilise that funding to develop talent, develop companies and where we can invest in people's projects that might help them make a difference. So for instance, we might make a small award to a company that want to develop a pilot for a television idea, for instance, 
we can give them a small amount of money. We can't fund production, we don't have those sorts of budgets, but we can give them a small amount of money to do some test footage, a taste of tape that they can then take to broadcasters, and we've had some success in the recent past where they've then secured TV commissions. Undoubtedly, the North East suffers from the fact that it's uh, geographically distant from London where obviously the major TV and film sector in the country is. However, that doesn't mean that we don't have great talent in the North East and some interest in production companies because we do. They need development, they need support. We hope we can offer that. We hope if we can't offer them support we can help bring experts to the region that can help develop their companies. We can signpost them to organisations that might be better funded than us um, and we can basically run a series of events where we bring talent that we hope will inspire people. We ultimately would like to have a production fund because we think that is going to be the best way to support companies both within the region and bring filming projects here. So I look enviously to Yorkshire that has a £15 million fund and one of the key aims of Northern Film and Media is to try and persuade funders in the region that we should have similar because anything, you know, we can do it here in the region. We've got the talent, we've got the ideas, we've got the locations, um, but we need that production fund to just bring more activity to the region. My name's Gail Woodruff, I'm the Production Service Manager for Northern Film and Media. I've been here quite a long time. My job is about promoting the region to film and TV companies to get them to come here and film rather than film elsewhere. But once they're here, to make sure that they find everything that they need, whether it's locations, crew, facilities, the right contact in local authorities, hotels, anything that they need, we try to make sure that they find it here so that they have a good experience filming whilst they're here but also that we, we maximise the benefit from having them in the region filming. We've had a, a massive influx of drama over the last few years, which is brilliant. A few years ago, when Wire in the Blood it was canned, followed by Biker Grove, we, there was a dearth of it for quite a while, but we've had an awful lot over the last few years. We've got Vera, George, Gently, uh, CBBC are doing an awful lot of drama for children with Wolf Blood and Dumping Ground, and they did Harriet's Army. Uh, one of the things that we do is we're here to help where necessary. With some of those productions, we've been there from day one. With George Gently and Vera, each of those had a small investment from Northern Film and Media at the time to make them consider the North East for filming. And with both productions, the first series we were probably very, very involved with, helping them with locations, making sure they access the right person and local authorities. With George Gently, helping them find lots of empty schools to use as their bases, and working very closely with the councils in the areas that they're filming to make sure, again, everybody is happy with it. It depends very much what they want. Some people want us to be on the phone to them 24 hours a day. Others very much know what they're doing, they know who they're hiring, they know where to find things locally, so they get on and do it. And we're there to fill in the gaps where, where it's needed. So we've worked a lot with all those different productions, but also I spend quite a lot of time trying to encourage productions to come here as well. Um, it's always the ones that get away. You know, we almost, almost, almost had Mission Impossible on the stage roof that kind of thing. We do a lot of work to, to encourage them that it's possible. I'm often asked how you get your, your property onto film or TV. We have got an online database, www.northernmedia.org forward slash LCF for locations, crews and facilities. You can register a property on there. We are always looking for locations to be used for film and TV. And private homes can be the trickiest, simply because nobody knows what you've got behind your doors. The issue can be if somewhere is too small, um, but if you imagine you can get two people in a camera in a room, then it could be used for filming. So it's worthwhile people having a look, getting registered. Usually there's a location fee available for it and there is absolutely no obligation. As well as the projects that we do for traditional film and TV uh, makers, and people whose work's focused on, on narrative uh, content, we've also increasingly done quite a lot of work with artist filmmakers. Um, particularly in partnership with Baltic Centre for Contemporary Art where we're based um, and two of the main projects I've been working on recently have been in partnership with Baltic. We ran an arts TV forum recently which brought uh, leading commissioners from all of the major broadcasters to the region 
to debate the future uh, landscape of arts on television, to ask in a very open and direct way whether this is a golden age for um, arts on television. And we were lucky enough to have Alan Yentob delivering a keynote. It was great to be able to bring those kind of leading decision makers to the region so that practitioners here um, get to hear firsthand, uh, not just from the individuals, but the individuals in conversation with each other, actually really debating uh, the issues at hand. Another major project I've been working on is in connection with Baltic's exhibition. They used to call it The Moon. Um, as one strand of that is activity relating to Stanley Kubrick's film 2001 A Space Odyssey. The BFI have just re-released or just re-releasing a print of that film um, and we were lucky enough to secure materials from the Stanley Kubrick archive in London which constitute a strand of that exhibition um, and as part of that we're also doing a special uh, Q&A screening on the opening night of the film at Tyneside Cinema in partnership with Tyneside as well. Um, that we were lucky enough to have um, Joy Cuff, who was one of the artists who worked on the film, taking part in and being chaired by Pierce Bazzoni, who's a leading expert on the film. Uh, and there'll also be an accompanying show and tell event uh, relating to the exhibition um, that'll be happening here the day following. So those are on the 5th of December and the 6th of December, respectively. This episode will be the last of the repackaged content from the television series, at least presented in the format you see here. Next week, we'll be moving on to the first documentary in our lineup of new content. Exciting times! I've done it! <laughs>